Today, we are back with another exciting episode of Living Your Life. This episode is sure to pack a very impactful punch in the world of sickle cell disease. I believe that because we want to share with you today something I like to refer to as a lifeline for sickle cell patients, the American Red Cross. Yeah, the American Red Cross. See, for sickle cell patients, services provided by the American Red Cross when it comes to supplying our nation's warriors with much needed blood in the time of crisis is nothing, and I mean nothing short of heroic. Today, we're going to have a real sit down and share with two outstanding individuals who work together to make it happen when it comes to supplying our nation with the blood supply it needs to help millions of people throughout the country. Our first guest is the National Partnership Manager with the American Red Cross and has been with them since 2014. She began her career working with diverse populations in Atlanta and Metro Atlanta to educate on the importance of blood donations and diversity in the blood supply. She has more than 13 years of partnership development and community relations, and she's also a proud HBCU graduate of Xavier University in Louisiana. Now, our second guest is the executive medical officer of the Donor and Client Support Center for the American Red Cross in Charlotte, North Carolina. She has helped shape clinical practices, broaden awareness and understanding into plights of those living with sickle cell disease and how blood donors who are black, I said black, can help. Okay, with a long distinguished career at the American Red Cross, it has been said that she serves as a fierce advocate for leading critical conversations on structural racism and the impact of the social determinants of health. She is also known as Black Excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, living your life, please welcome Ebony Rose Friends and Dr. Yvette Miller. Hey, ladies, how y'all doing? Doing wonderful. How are you? Doing well. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm you. doing great. You know, I, I'll tell you one thing, um, that is, a uh, that's really, that's really impactful what y'all do for the American Red Cross and especially this initiative you all have going that we're going to be talking about today. And so, um, you know, what made y'all even want to get into sickle cell? Why, why, why did y'all pick this one? Well, sickle cell disease <laughs> is, I'll, I'll start. No, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sickle cell disease is the most common inherited blood disease in this country. It affects over 100,000 people and it primarily people of African descent. And we know historically that this patient population is underserved. <clears throat> and so after the murder of George Floyd, like many organizations, the American Red Cross stepped into that space and understood what our responsibility was in terms of uh, addressing health disparities and health inequities in relationship to this population of patients. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ebony, for your part, for your part, you chose sickle cell. Uh, you know, you, you all do so much for so many people around the world. You don't just go to relieve aid over in the world. You actually are in this blood donating business. Exactly. And because we are responsible for supplying 40% of the nation's blood supply, it is important that we really look at how diversity impacts many of the patients that we serve. And so that's why sickle cell disease was important that we focus on is what Dr. Miller said. Um, we want to make sure or really ensure that we can provide the most compatible blood unit for that patient who was re um, relying on frequent blood transfusions like patients living with sickle cell. Yeah, because, you know, um, everybody knows that September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month. You know, I mean, and, you know, and, and this this whole Join by Blood initiative, you know, and this is just an initiative to get African-Americans to come out and donate blood because it would really help us with sickle cell because like one in three African-Americans would be a match. You know, and, and there's so many ways that we can really help a lot of us with sickle cell just by coming out and donating. Do you have a reason why? Is there understood the American Red Cross why African-Americans don't give as much blood as everyone else? I would defer to well, Dr. Miller. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in this country, um, in terms of the blood donor pool, only about three to five percent of all individuals that donate blood are black. You see, you understand that that very small yeah. percentage. Yeah, that's a very so small percentage. Are, yes. And so there are reasons. There's a, a lack of trust um, in the black community regarding, you know, anything that involves the healthcare community and blood donation because it's 
you know, the blood is transfused at hospitals. Many people don't trust the healthcare system. And then that lack of trust, you know, spills over to not trusting the American Red Cross. You know, there have been some historical things, you know, in terms of, you know, experimentation and reasons why people in the Black community just don't step forward in that way and to donate blood. And then another important um, reason is that many people uh, in the African-American community, they know a little bit about what sickle cell disease is, but I would say the majority of people don't know that blood donation and blood transfusion are an essential part of the treatment of patients with sickle cell disease. You know what? Um, you know, I have sickle cell, Dr. Miller, and mm -hmm. I've had, um, I've had two transfusions in my life. And I can't tell you how important that blood was because they take all my blood out. They hook me up to two pumps. I got one on this arm, one on this arm, and they take to pump my bad blood out this arm and they put in the new blood of this one. But the crisis went away immediately. You know why the crisis went away? Because there were no sickle cells blocking my arteries and my veins. And see, that's the importance of what giving blood can do for people like us with sickle cell. And I hate that the number is so low. Because there's so many of us, and we're not just talking about even for sickle cell. Let's say we were just talking about somebody who needed blood in a car accident or anything in life. That 3 to 5% of blood that we donate as African Americans, that got to be split up amongst everybody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And thank you so much for mentioning that treatment that you have. It's called um, a red cell exchange where we take basically almost half of the patient's blood out and then we transfuse them with normal blood. And as you describe, people, uh, patients say that immediately they start to feel better. So those patients, are, and that's called an exchange transfusion, they can require 10 or more units of blood for one transfusion episode. So you can quickly see how much blood is needed all over this country with over 100,000 patients, 100,000 um, individuals with sickle cell disease who might need transfusion that are on those types of protocols. So um, yeah. again, thank you for mentioning that. Oh, absolutely. Because I've, I've had that done. I understand the importance of it. And, you know, you know, and I, I like to say this, you know, I, there's only so much that, that I can do, but I'm using my platform to get the word out here with the American Red Cross, because I believe the work in which you're doing is so highly important. And then we're specifying with this initiative joined by blood. Who came up with this idea? Who came up with the joined by blood initiative? I would say, I would say it's a combination of those who are on our blood services side. They came up with the initiative because they saw the need. And in addition to coming up with the initiative, they knew that we couldn't work in a silo and work alone. You mentioned your platform. You mentioned telling your story. Dr. Mitch, Dr. Miller mentioned building trust within community because we can't work in silos. We depend on, and we are thrilled to partner with you, Kier, in organizations like Kier's yeah. Hope Foundation, right? Yeah, um, well, I want to say on behalf of Curious Hope, uh, we are a wonderful organization who is always about helping the community. I mean, I know I started it. I have to say that because that's what I did. I did that. Go ahead, girl. Go you ahead and get my prize. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. We are thrilled to partner with you because you have a platform and so many other organizations like the 100 Black Men of America, right? Um, the NAACP many of our faith-based organizations, and of course, our Divine Nine membership organizations all have a platform and have a deeply rooted history in service and mentorship within the community. They can use their platform to one, further elevate our messaging about sickle cell and sickle cell trait and the importance of diversity within the blood supply. And what did Dr. Miller say? Build trust in the community because we have to start there in order to help um, diversify the blood supply. Yeah, I, you know what I say, uh, and I say this, Donovan, it's like, and you have to understand, we don't want you for, you know, a one-time donation. You know, we want to build this relationship with you. You know, we want to build this relationship that, because you don't understand that, I do realize this, that people, people don't just go get a transfusion once. There are people with sickle cell who consistently have to have blood transfusion. Am I right, Dr. Miller? You are absolutely right. There are some patients with sickle cell disease that 
go into the hospital literally on a weekly basis, you know, suffering a pain crisis or some other complication with sickle cell disease. So many patients need transfusions every single week. And so this, and because Afri as African Americans, we have some um, unique um, antigens on our red blood cells that are more common in people of African descent, many patients with sickle cell disease will find the most, we will find the most compatible unit of blood from someone who is of African descent or African American. So that's really one of the critical messages about why it's important for people that are black to donate is because uh, um, one in three African Americans will be a match for a patient with sickle cell disease. You know, and, and that's highly important because see now we have the person, we have the person who needs the blood. Okay. Now we have to get to the person who can give the blood. I mean, and, and, and I'm going to say, I mean, it's like you want to partner with organizations in the community to host uh, uh, the fastest way we get them is blood drives. Right. Right. Talk to us about what the American Red Cross is looking for in partnerships to have host blood drive, because that's where we're going to get the blood. We, we're going to have, we're going to have people out in your neighborhood. Well, I, I think I've been to so many American Red Cross blood drive. Y'all really just pull up in your neighborhood. It ain't like we got to go find, it ain't like y'all far. Y'all will park that whole thing up there and set up tent anywhere. As soon as you come out of church, is that the American Red Cross Center? Yes, we outside the church. Yes. That's right. Yes, yes. we here. That's right. yeah, it, I'm, I'm at the beauty salon. Yes, that is the American Red Cross outside your beauty salon. They, <laughs> they everywhere. <laughs> yeah, be out there. Yeah. Go, Jamaica, go. Yeah, the football game. Is that the American Cross at the Little League football game? Yes. <laughs> they everywhere. I've seen this. Yeah. But tell them what you're willing to do to get this blood. We are willing, we are absolutely willing to first ask. We have to ask. We have to be out there in the community where the need is and and work with organizations who are willing to help us prevent and alleviate human suffering and that's mm -hmm. by getting that blood that is necessary and it's so easy to partner with the red cross it's as simple as going to joinbyblood.org and tapping at the top hosting a blood drive and filling out a form submitting it and someone from the red cross will contact you and will work you will walk you through every stage so it's very simple. It's just simply having a giving heart and a can-do spirit. Yes. That's right. Yeah, that, that, and that's what it is. Because I'm telling y'all, listen to me. They will show up anywhere. I don't care if you're on your way to heaven before you go through the gate. Is that the American Red Cross? Yes. Yes. They are here. They are here. I just, I'm proud to just know that because Dr. Miller, you know, if you, you know, we got the person down, we got the person that needs the blood. Then we got the people who want to give the blood, but then we got to talk about how do we prepare to be donors? What, what, what are we looking for? What makes me a good donor and what makes you a bad donor, Dr. Miller? So let me just say one other thing. The Red Cross meets individuals and organizations where they are. And you, you just kept saying <laughs> Red Cross shows up anywhere. Absolutely. We understand the importance of partnership and that's what we have to do. We have to meet people where they are. I, so no, Dr. Question, Miller, I wasn't making that up. No, no, I wasn't making that oh, up. I know. I've seen y'all. I've seen y'all <laughs> everywhere. Just at the barbecue cookout, family reunions, American Red Cross has been there. Yes, I have seen it. I'm not, I wasn't being funny. I was, it's funny, but it's absolutely true. They will meet you right mm -hmm. where you are. Right. They really will. That's right. Absolutely. We want to make so sure we're providing an opportunity. I was, I'm sorry, Dr. Miller. I just want to say we wanted oh, to make sure we're providing an opportunity for everyone in various communities to donate. So Kira, we got to be everywhere, right? Yes, you have to be everywhere. I'm telling you, I don't care where you at. You can come out the funeral. They go be out there. Right out there, as soon as you get through crying, just come over here and get this blood. We were, we were here for you. I know y'all everywhere. But 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 then just on top of that, what does it take? And I mean this because, like I said, we got the person who, who needs the blood. All right? Mm -hmm. We reached somebody. We got people that's excited to donate. But what makes you, and they got to stand, everybody's blood is not what we need. What makes you a good donor and what makes you a bad donor? Uh, well, my point of view is that everybody can be a good donor because the first thing you have to do is be feeling healthy and well. And um, 
you know, sometimes people say, you know, I have this condition or that condition and you're not, and they're not, you know, well enough to donate. Again, most people are healthy and well. People with well-controlled diabetes, you know, hypertension that's controlled. A lot of people will say, you know, I'm anemic. Again, those are just things that they have been told, but most people are healthy and well enough to donate blood. I do encourage people if they um, if they have a concern about donating blood, have a conversation with their healthcare provider. But most people are healthy and well enough to donate blood. And if they do have questions about a medication that they're on or on or a condition that they have, they can call 1-800-RED-CROSS and speak to someone who can walk them through and answer their questions about whether they're eligible to eligible or not, but they can also go to redcrossblood.org and there's a link in there that has information about um, eligibility to be able to donate. But there are multiple ways for people to screen themselves in to be a blood donor and not screen themselves out. So there's no bad blood donors. There's just people that have questions that we uh -huh. may be able to ask to um, so that they understand that they absolutely are eligible to donate. Okay, well, let me ask you a question. I have a question. Yes. Yes. Am I allowed to give blood? No, you are not allowed to give blood. Tell them why I can't give with, blood. You're right. Individuals with sickle cell disease cannot donate blood because their blood cells are abnormally shaped and they are just not appropriate for transfusion to someone else. That's why people yes. with sickle cell disease cannot donate yeah. blood. But people with yeah. sickle cell trait can donate blood. there you go yes you can if you have sickle cell yes. trait you can if you have sickle cell disease you cannot we have to put that out there because people say well i got a sickle Absolutely. cell trait and i don't think that's good i ain't gonna be able to help nobody for sickle cell no i'll probably give this no 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 trait you can disease you cannot and miss ebony could you go over the process of what happens um when you uh when you are going through the process to give blood like the, the, the entire problem, because I like to give people an idea of what to expect when I get there and how I'm going to be treated. And am I going to be safe in this environment while I'm giving my blood? Like, I don't know, like y'all ain't gonna just leave me bleed out on the floor or nothing like this here. No, not at all. So <laughs> donating blood is really a simple four step process. And um, the entire process takes about an hour to about an hour and 15 minutes. The actual donation process you know, based on how well you prepare, it can take about eight to 10 minutes. So what a donor can expect when they first arrive to a blood drive is to be greeted by a Red Cross staff member or a volunteer who will then ask for their ID as well as um, uh, their registration appointment. They're gonna provide you with the correct information to get you situated and ready for your health history part. That's step two. So step two is where we're gonna kind of get into your health related business. But it's all confidential and it's done by a Red Cross staff member that will be able to make sure that your information stays private. Once you get through health history, it's step three. That's the actual donation. That should take about, again, eight to 10 minutes. Once you're done with the actual donation, then you go over to our area where you, you're sitting there, you get your rehydrated and you get some wonderful snacks. And that's our way of saying thank you for donating. Um, my favorite snacks are probably the Nutter Butters. I'm just yeah, I'm about to say which <laughs> snacks we talk about. Cause you know, I, I know y'all y'all ain't got to take my blood, but I will go over there for snacks though. Right, and that's and just then, our way of saying thank you. You know, well, I tell you, I'm just gonna walk past step one, two, and three. I'll go straight to four and just pick up some uh, uh, Reese's Pieces Buttercups to buy. That's my favorite. Well, I'm not sure if we have Reese's Pieces, but uh, <laughs> if, if we get some people to donate, we gonna have to get some because I'm coming. Well, Kira's Hope Foundation is going to make sure we have. Some I, yeah, there you go. Put it off on us. <laughs> and you know what? Um, here's another thing, too, because after you donate, so now we got the persons that got the blood, got people donate, I've donated, and now we get to talk about, you know, this process that you guys are working on. Like, you want, the, uh, you want to mentor and improve the outcomes of populations in diverse neighborhoods. And, and it's just not just for us. This is what the Red Cross mission is. And talk to us about that, um, Doctor Doctor Miller and, and Ebony. How how, how do y'all feel about that? What what is what is the goal? So, as we know, mentorship is very important in so many people's lives. And what we 
at the Red Cross felt, felt like that we can do two folds. We can mentor as well as educate on sickle cell. So what we did was created an HBCU ambassador leadership program. And so we're working with 39 HBCUs and we have students there that not, are not only educating on sickle cell and the importance of sickle cell, but they're also getting mentored and receiving um, development from some of our top leaders. So uh, in addition to that, many of our organizations are also stepping out there and they're working with these students to better help mentor them as well. Dr. Miller can speak more so to the health outcomes of the patients that mm -hmm. we're servicing through the blood drives that we're hosting at these HBCUs. Dr. Miller, what does that look like for us? How well, well are we doing? Well, an, important, yeah, an important piece of the mentorship program is instructing and supporting these um, students in being advocates. So they are getting mentored by some of the, the most um, educated and experienced individuals in the blood, uh, in the blood donation um, area and, and blood collection area. But we're also giving them the words, the concepts, the thoughts that they need to advocate on behalf of patients with sickle cell disease, as well as being able to advocate in the black community why it's so important for people that are African-American of African descent to donate, again, to meet the transfusion needs of the patients with sickle cell disease, but also to meet the transfusion needs of the general population. Um, in this country, the most uh, common blood type is group O, and over 50% of people in the black community are group blood O. Uh, blood type O. And so even if we weren't having this conversation around meeting the transfusion needs of patients with sickle cell disease, we would still be having this conversation around blood donation by the black community to meet the general population transfusion needs. So advocacy, education, and mentoring are the three-pronged approach that we have um, in relationship to the HBCUs, but also with our partners. Yeah, and that and that's so important because I love the fact that if you're gonna find black people, why not go to the HBCU? Because you know, you know, and that's why the emphasis, like you know, the Join by Blood Initiative, is something that I'm not just doing just for my foundation, but also on the morning show when I talk about the Join by Blood Initiative. You know, I, I've been doing this for three years. It's my third year doing this with the Red Cross. Um, so that's why when you guys came on, that's why I knew a lot about it because I've already been doing it. But I'm just glad we get to share with other people that we're looking and we want and we need black people to donate blood. And I, I said that in the intro, like we're emphasizing, it is important for black people to look after black people. As we have always done in this country. We always had to look after one another, whether it be for jobs, whether it be for blood, whether it be for family, whether it be for friends. We're doing it with blood now. We just need black people to get up and donate. And, 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 then, and since we talk about that, what is the status right now of the Red Cross blood supply? What do we look like for us? As a matter, yeah, as a matter of fact, um, right now we're having some challenges. You know, in um, in September, in August and September, before while people are still on vacation and schools are not back in session, we sometimes have a decrease in our um, in our uh, blood supply. And so right now, the Join by Blood initiative, we have activated in September and October, again, to get the message out around the fact that we do need for people to roll up their sleeves and come and donate because the units of blood that we have been distributing to our hospitals are falling a little bit short based on the needs of our patients. So we absolutely are encouraging and advocating for our community partners, as well as for individuals to roll up their sleeves, to host blood drives, and to donate blood, because we definitely need to increase the, number, the amount of blood that we have available for transfusion. You know, and that is, that's, that's, <laughs> That's 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 why we're doing this. Miss Ebony, you want to say something? I'm sorry. No, no problem. Um, Dr. Miller's right. And I just wanted to add in situations like this, it also highlights the need to engage more 
new blood donors because we have to make sure that we're bringing in new blood donors as some blood donors are beginning to age out. And we have those critical times, like it's summertime, there's always a critical time. In the winter, there's a critical time because of the holiday season. And so when that happens, we do rely on the engagement of our new blood donors. And again, that's where our partners come in and consistently hosting blood drives that, like you said, Kier, not having a one and done, but consistently hosting blood drives and educating the community. Yes, because I, I think you guys are going to do fantastic. We're so glad to he, be uh, here at Living Your Life, helping you all with this Joined by Blood initiative. Cures Hope is proud to be a part of the Joined by Blood initiative. Um, you know, if there's anything you guys want to say before we go, please feel free. I always give everybody the opportunity to make their case and understand why you come on Living Your Life, because we can't live our lives if we don't have the blood. If we're not feeling healthy enough, we don't get the transfusion. It makes it very hard to live your life. And that's all we're about over here is finding ways to let you know that, hey, you too can live your life. And you can, all you have to do is just donate some blood. Help us live our lives. That's what we're doing this Sickle Cell Initiative. And we want to make sure that we get everybody we can to roll up their sleeve, show up and just say, hey, hang out with the Red Cross. There's been some pretty cool nurses be over there just hanging out, taking the blood. You know, laughs be over there. Everything be going on over there. Get your rib or something over there. Get some potato salad. Sit down. Talk with these people. But give the blood is most important. Go ahead, Miss Ebony. Go ahead. Yes, we want everyone to get involved um, to help you to help everyone live their best life, right? How do they do it? By going to joinbyblood.org and clicking the button donate and signing up and finding a comfortable location near you, near you whether it's a blood drive, mm -hmm. whether it's a donor center. Everyone has an opportunity to give back and to save lives. Man, I love that. Ms. Miller. Yeah. And um, Ebony, again, when you go to uh, Joined by Blood to make your appointment, when you make that appointment, the second most important part is to keep that appointment. And then some of the milestones, absolutely, some of the milestones that we've reached with the, um, the Sickle Cell Initiative and the Joined by Blood activation is that we have had over, since we um, started the Sickle Cell Initiative in 2021, we have had over 45,000 First time blood donors donate to the come American on. Red Cross. You Over 45,000. And as 45. Ebony said, <laughs> absolutely, that was, that's an incredible milestone. Yeah. And it helped decrease, it helped reverse that trend because with COVID, because remember COVID disproportionately affected the black community. And so the number of black blood donors decreased significantly. And so with this um, Joined by Blood initiative, uh, Sickle Cell Initiative, the number of African-American first-time donors increased significantly. A second really important milestone is that we have screened over 138,000 individuals for sickle cell trait. And so, and remember that not, even though since 2006, it has been uh, mandatory in all 50 states for newborns to be screened for sickle cell trait, there are still generations of adults who do not know their sickle cell trait status. So we have been providing screening for sickle cell trait when um, individuals who self-identify as African-American um, uh, for sickle cell trait screening. So we have just had some great milestones and we absolutely appreciate your partnership with you for getting this message out it, you know, in a very heartfelt um, and community-based way. I, 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 that's not a problem for me, you know, because it is very important because the reason why you need to know your sickle cell um, trait status is because you'll create somebody like me. And like it was for my parents, it was devastating for them to find out after seven years before they diagnosed me. I was seven years old when they diagnosed me. And my parents found out that I had sickle cell and didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know what was going to happen. They had no plan. They had never heard of it. It was something so foreign. And then they told me I only had so long to live. And now they got this baby they think they're going to have to bury. And those are emotions that you go through not knowing your sickle cell trait status when you find out that your child has sickle cell. And that's why we do this program, because I want you to understand that after I'm gone, after there's nothing else gone, the information is here. See, this will live on forever. The information is here. This message about the Red Cross will live on forever. The message is here. We want you to understand this is the importance of sickle cell and the Red, American um, Red Cross, because we want y'all to understand that this blood is that important. That is the only way we get to live. 
People have to have a transfusion almost every single day. Some go twice a week. Some may go once a month. Some may go every weekend. But the blood is what we need to keep them people alive. And that's what we need. We need the blood. American Red Cross, listen, this Ebony Rose France, this 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 Dr. Miller, listen, I have I have really enjoyed this conversation. I'm so glad you guys stopped by to talk about what it is you're doing. I wish you all the success. Please come back if you need to talk about it again. If you got something else y'all need me to do, let me know. I just work for y'all pretty much. Just without the check. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for everything that yeah. you're doing. I appreciate it. Hey, listen, we want to thank our very special guest, Mrs. Ebony Rose France and Dr. Yvette Miller for joining us today. It's been super informative and enlightening. Now, remember, one in three African-American blood donors is a match for people with sickle cell. You're needed to donate now and throughout the fall to help patients counting on life-saving blood following accidents, during surgeries, and for treatment of conditions such as sickle cell disease. Patients battling sickle cell disease need your help now, and I need your help. Now, listen, please schedule a blood donation appointment today by visiting joinedbyblood.org. That's joinedbyblood.org. Or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today for another exciting episode of Living Your Life. Please don't forget to follow us on all our social media handles and spread the good word about Living Your Life podcast, a place where we explore inspiring stories about people who live their passion, pursue their dreams, and share their successes while living and thriving with life-threatening illnesses like sickle cell disease. Click subscribe now. Be notified so you never miss an episode of Living Your Life. Thank you, everybody. Stay blessed. Bye now.